As I mentioned earlier on Wesley Impact, I've had the honour of speaking with such a broad cross-section of people who represent an aspect of the Christian faith. Over the years, we've spoken with hundreds of people and I'm in the process of producing a, a perspective DVD series, which is a selection of interviews from people in public leadership who excel in the sporting arena or are well known in the entertainment industry or whatever. And the first instalment is Perspectives on Faith and Leadership, which brings together interviews with interesting people. Andrew Scipioni, the New South Wales Police Commissioner. Dr Graham Clark, who developed that wonderful cochlear ear implant. And the former political leader, John Brockton. Today, I'd like to take a look at the interview with well-respected TV journalist, news anchor and media personality, Lee Hatcher. When he appeared on Wesley Impact, I asked him why he chose to be a journalist. Lee's a fine Christian journalist and one whose life has made a difference. I value his friendship and I hope you'll enjoy this interview. Well, there was no grand design, I must say. I, did, I wasn't one of those kids who spent their whole childhood thinking, I want to be a newsman. Mm -hmm. I, if you'd asked me in my final year of high school, mm -hmm. where do you want to go? I'd say, I want to be in show business, mm -hmm. which I think, well, wh what did that mean? Mm -hmm. My parents directed me towards radio. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I got a job as an office boy at 2GB in Sydney mm -hmm. in 1973. First day, 12th of November 1973, I walked into the newsroom oh, yeah. on my first delivery there. And I must say, it was love at first sight. I was absolutely captivated mm -hmm. by the buzz of it, the sound, those clunky old mm -hmm. telephones, telex machines, um, this tape spooling, people yelling. And I'd, I had this stupid kind of smile on my face as I stood there and thought, oh, this is just wonderful. You were just waiting for that opportunity when you could be, you know. In yeah, yeah. And, and I thought, well, uh, my, my, the job of an office boy was supposed to expose you to the various parts of the radio station where you could pick where you wanted to go. Mm. And I think my, my decision was made on that first day. And I badgered the news director for about five months until he finally relented, I think, to just shut me up as much as anything else. So the fast forward to this new opportunity, yes. it, it, it kind of picks up then, doesn't it, from that point? Yeah, well, I've said numbers of times how, in all honesty, while many of my journalistic colleagues might be rather confused about this, much of my life, my faith and my work will culminate in Open House. Mm. It's a content-driven program, 8 to 11 Sunday nights around this uh, network of mm. Christian radio stations. And it's very content-driven. We, like your program, do interviews with lots of interesting people mm. and connect with an audience to an extent that you you find quite rare in, in media today. So there are so many things about what I've experienced in work, what I've experienced in life, and in my faith, where I think, well, this has just uniquely equipped me for this opportunity. And the Jesus thing, your faith, uh, uh, affects the way you do the journalism, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, it can't help it. And it's been... I think it's, there are so many ways in which that's true. I think perhaps what I say is, more than anything else, it's, a, it's drawn a big picture for me. Mm. So in the news, you're always concentrating on the, the crisis of the moment. Or the crisis of the, mm. the hour and the huge story. Mm. But I know a bigger picture mm. and I know the one who designed that, mm. sustains it and runs it. Lee, we've talked before about some of the challenges that you face. I know you were uh, willing and you've written about the, the challenges you faced in terms of your, your own health. H how important is that in your Christian journey? Oh, I think it was a defining time in my uh, life. Certainly my career, because it uh, led to two years of unemployment. And certainly in my faith, um, in the middle of my summer holidays of 1998, from nowhere I contracted an everyday virus that, to cut a long and very uh, torturous story short, uh, meant two and a half, quarter years in the midst of the very real and very debilitating chronic fatigue syndrome. I, said, I think Lost you my job. talk about growing up and becoming... Oh, yeah. ..in that time. I, I think I've... I grew up in my faith. I think... I was, I was clearly someone who believed in God and knew the reality of Jesus and, and believed in the Bible and everything like that. But I think it was more a head knowledge than a heart knowledge. Mm. And this was a very um, difficult time, a very challenging time, where everything is thrown up in the air. Mm. And, and I lost a lot, materially, in my career, in my health. Mm. And yet there is nothing like suffering Mm. to sort out what's really important in life. And for me, it was a great journey close to God, 
uh, with the God of all comfort. That's not always the case with, with Christian people who go through suffering, of course. Mm. But I was, I was deeply privileged to, as I said, grow up in my faith. So I, I didn't have to be preached at mm. and, and convinced in my head that God was real. I, I knew it in my life. Mm. And it was a very um, big difference to where I'd been in my Christian life before. Look, you talked a moment ago about the big pitch. You talked about this, this experience that helps you to grasp that. Um, I think it's important, isn't it, really, that Christians are not just preaching the gospel at people, but doing what they do every day yeah. in the knowledge of their experience and the Christian gospel. Yeah. I mean, you must find sometimes Christians think, oh, well, here's a great guy, he's on the television, he'll advertise our, our, our event, our <laughs> church, right. to, yeah. to communicate the faith. It's not yeah. really just about that, is it? No. I think what, what my illness taught me is the, is the foundational imperative of love. Mm. If love drives your every action mm. in life, especially in the Christian life, as we're told to do by Jesus, mm. it will fix up so much about what we do and especially why we do it, mm. how long we might do it mm. and the reasons for it. Mm. Um, if we're doing it to put uh, runs on the board or you know, run up notches on our belts of conversion, say, mm. or, or achievements that the world might be, might be impressed by, it's all pretty empty. Mm. And, mm. and yet, if we're, we're founded on the biblical imperative of love, sure it kind of fixes up a lot of Christian ministry. But we, we are interested in this new programme. Tell us about what the plans are for the programme. I'm already feeling the great privilege, you know, weeks into it, uh, of the number of people, really interesting people, um, that I've had the privilege to, to meet and interview. I'm sure you find it here as well. Um, my job in the news business is just basically reading the news day to day. Um, and, and it's an absorbing job and I really enjoy it and it's, it's a very challenging job. But this is so, something so different where you're really immersing yourself and, and I seek to do the audience as well in, in the lives of real people and tell stories. Mm. Um, not necessarily new stories but real stories of, of real people, often very uplifting stories and I'm, I'm already feeling the I, weight of responsibility but also the great privilege of it. And I have to remind myself, you know, we film this in Sydney as many people know, but it goes all around Australia and so yeah. some of our uh, viewers are in Melbourne and Brisbane, they, they love it and you have the same experience. Oh yeah, and it's, I've had the privilege of living outside of the, the eastern seaboard mm. um, and working outside. So I well know how people of the east are viewed by mm. those in Perth or Adelaide or, or, or even Melbourne, you know, mm. people viewing mm. Sydney. So um, I, I've got a real sense of what the, the national audience is like. Mm. And, uh, and this is not only a national but international message that we seek to bring.